All right, so we're, we're pleased to be joined by one of our favorites, Jake Wimberly. Of course, you know him, ESPN Radio out of Jackson, Mississippi, host of the Afternoon Drive. Jake, how's it going, man? Michael, it's going great. Sorry, I'm kind of in the dark on the way in. And hey, we're getting a little extra uh, treat down here. It's actually raining in the state of Mississippi. Something I hadn't done but about twice in six months. So, <laughs> well, I think the, the those dark clouds started forming uh, over Starkville, and maybe that's what brought it in there. But uh, <laughs> yeah, what, yeah, there's a doubt about it. How, how? I mean, the level of, of surprise that Zach Arnett got fired. It, it it has to be no surprise whatsoever, right? I don't think so. You know, when you look at the situation that, that transpired, obviously Mike Leach passing away last year, and the, you know, unforeseen circumstances of that, not having an athletics director, John Cohen had went to Auburn. And then, you know, Dr. Mark Keenum at Mississippi State had to make a decision. With a transfer portal window coming up, you know, with the, the uh, first signing period coming up. And I think, you know, we talked about this last year. It made sense that you would promote from within um, at the time. Unfortunately, that did not work out. Um, you hire Zach Selman from the University of Oklahoma, and as most athletic directors would do this with just about any sport, especially football, you look at it and you say, okay, nothing personal, not my staff, not my coach. Um, NIL money could become an issue. Guys are decommitting from the, from the football class. And look, Michael, I was at the Kentucky game two weeks ago, and, you know, Kentucky's a nice football team. We know that, but they're not great. They're not Bama. They're not Georgia. Uh, they don't have Texas A&M talent. And they made Mississippi State. They just pushed them all over the field. So, you know, they have looked in up offensively. They've gone backwards defensively. And I think that you look at the new SEC coming in with Texas and Oklahoma, and Zach Summon says, hey, look, we're not getting any better. we gotta, we got to make a shot. we got to make a change here. got to make a shot. Yeah, and one thing you, you hit on there, Jake, that's critical is NIL. And I've heard that from a couple people. I, I've heard the NIL is, is – an issue for Mississippi State, but you're much more closer to it than than I am. So let me ask you: is is it a, is it an issue, or was it potentially an issue with Zach Arnett? Nothing against the guy, but maybe people didn't want to give to uh, to what he was doing. And now that a, that a a commitment has has been shown by the administration to to get this right, get the right coach in there, that they're confident that the NIL will follow because. You know, you, clearly, Jimbo's out, so NIL is not going to fix everything for you, but we, let's not be naive. Yet you, you have to be in the ballpark if you're going to be competitive in, in the SEC. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I, I don't know that it's any more of an issue at Mississippi State as it is, say, Iowa State. And, you know, not to speak because every – you know, this is, that's what's so interesting about NIL. You take a school like Southern Methodist – um, you know, there's, uh, you know, Secretary David McRae, who is, uh, you know, state treasurer for the state of Mississippi. He's a friend we do business with. He's, a, he's an SMU grad. And we talk all the time. He'll talk publicly about all the NIL money that Southern Methodist is rolling in. And, of course, we know that's because of, you know, the whole money in Texas and thing of that nature. And I bring up SMU is because every university is different. You know, Mississippi State is going to have their issues with it. Um, Iowa State will have it. Obviously, the Georgias and the Alabamas and the Ohio States and Michigans and Texas a and may not. So, you know, you're, what you're doing to ask any fan base, I think, when you're talking about NIL is now you've got three levels of giving, right? So you've got the traditional giver who graduates from a university, maybe in the engineering school or the business school or whatever that may be. They go on to be extremely successful. He or she gives back money to that school of whatever to have their name on a building or a scholarship fund, they can see a residual. The second is the season ticket holder that gives to the club, the Bulldog Club, the Volunteer Club, whatever that may be. They can see residual out of that as well, where they sit and, and see the tickets, parking passes, all that kind of stuff. Now you got the third pot, the NIL pot. So what are you really getting for it? So I, I think to answer your question in a long about way, I don't necessarily think it's a problem. I think it could potentially become a problem for Mississippi State if Zach Arnett, like you said, was retained, which is another reason I think they made the change personally, uh, because I think you have to have somebody that can reignite the fan base in, in a very weird economy and say, hey, we're rolling. we got this thing going. You need to give money to the football program as well. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've seen uh, Lane Kiffin's comments this week. I'll, I'll edit it in here for any of the audience that missed it. I mean, it's not like it used to be. And, you know, there used to be you had time to build things and you had, 
years to sign classes and see them develop, you know, before people made decisions. So it's obviously not what's going on. Um, you know, to be let go 10 games into your first season when you get hired late, um, you know, like Zach really is, I mean, I, I don't know how you do that that fast or how the ex expectation is to judge you that fast about the job that you did. So unfortunately, it's kind of the end thing to fire people fast. And, um, you know, to me, it's a lot of grass is always greener. So it is what it is. But basically the gist of it was, you know, the grass isn't always greener. We, we're only giving this guy 10 games and we're already – uh, making a move, you just kind of he, he, the way Kiffin saw is just kind of uh, unrealistic expectations. What would you say to uh, to someone that maybe is, is saying that same thing about Mississippi State making this decision, not even giving Arnett even a full season? I, I would say this, and I've had a couple people on my show in the afternoon over the last, you know, two or three days and even talking about this last week. Uh, I don't remember the guy, one particular caller in, in particular called and said, hey, are you telling me that now we're giving these coaches only one year? I, I definitely see Lane's point in this in that, hey, are we really down to, I mean, you have zero room for error. I, I see what he's saying, but I also see the side of, of Zach Selman in that, you know, if you take a program like Mississippi State that is on the way down, so to speak, or at least it looks that way, and then let's say you roll the dice and give him a shot again, then what if you turn another four win or even a three win season ticket sales start to dry up? The NIL drives up. I mean, we know this, Michael, winning cures everything um, in, in sports. And when people, when teams win, uh, depending on what level they win, the fan base buys in with ticket sales or they buy out, check out. So, you know, I, I definitely understand where Kippen is coming from on this, but I think in this new age of where we're at, and it's in particular with the situation in Mississippi State, I think it was the right move to make for Zach Selvin. Mm. And and what about uh, the expectations in Starfield? Because let's you know let's not sugarcoat it. Dan Mullen, I think he's the best coach in school history. Everything uh, provided, you know, I I realize he came just short of, of being the winningest coach, but that's because he left. And then Mike Leach was, you know, there, there's many different opinions of Mike Leach, but he was outstanding. He'd win you a couple games every year that you probably had no business winning. But in between, we've seen Joe Moorhead. And in this brief stint, we've seen Zach Arnett. So where where is the expectation, you think, for the whoever the next coach is? Because Mississippi State fans, they demand a, you know, a competitive team. And, and, I mean, making a bowl game is probably not even celebrated anymore when it probably was, you know, over a, over a decade ago. Where, where do you think that, that expectation level is for the next coach coming off two outstanding coaches and, and two – very below average coaches that, that we have seen in recent seasons at Mississippi State. That's a great way. Prior to Dan Mullen, when Sylvester Groom was there, and then you look back at the end of the Jackie Sherrill era, which obviously Mississippi State honored Jackie Sherrill and that 98 championship team uh, that played Tennessee in the SEC title game a couple weeks ago. Um, was on, again, was on campus for that. A really good, nice celebration for that crew. Uh, but coming out of the end of Sherrill and Groom, that, this program – was a disaster, and Dan Mullen brought it out of out of out of a disaster into a nice program that was competitive. Went to bowl games every year, and you know, while people kind of you know kicked and moaned and cussed and bust a little bit about you know Leach may have left this win on the table or that win, I, I think now people are seeing it because now you're starting to hear comparisons this year of the Croom era, comparisons to the end of the of the Cheryl era, and those comparisons are valid. I mean, if you are old enough to remember those teams. And you watch this team this year, you go, wow, this looks eerily familiar, you know, a la 19, uh, you know, 1991 or, or 2001. It looks very familiar. So I think, you know, Mississippi State fans typically are not fans that are overly, you know, optimistic. I mean, I, I think that if you get State to a bowl game in football, if you, you live six, seven, eight, nine wins, I think they would take that every day and twice on Sunday and, you know, some may call that. I had a guy call in today and said, hey, if you're there, that's just that's just uh, accepting mediocrity. But, <laughs> excuse me, I think you have to know who you are. And Mississippi State's never going to be Alabama. They're, they're never going to be Georgia. Um, you know, I equate it to a weightlifter. This is probably a dumb analogy. You know, I may want to lift 300 pounds, 
but I may can only get 200 and I can work and work and work. But I know I'm never going over 200. Look, Alabama and Georgia lifted 300. State's a 200 lifter. And I think as long as they can max out their potential with that, I think state fans will be happy. And I think if you can get a coach that can get them back to respectability and postseason play. And look, in the era of the playoff, the expanded playoff, if you get a spot in the playoff once every five, six, ten years, I think that that goes a long way as well. Sounds like you need to get in the gym with me, Jake. I'll get you 300, 350, no problem. No problem. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. Well, come do that. Uh, yes, let's do it. <laughs> uh, any idea based on uh, Selman's track record uh, that, you know, where he'd be looking, what kind of coach, you know, G5 assistant? Uh, do, do you have any indication what direction this, this will be going? You know, talking to some people this week up there close to that program, um, he's being very tight-lipped. He's not saying a whole lot. And, look, he said at his press conference, he said, this is the only time I'm going to speak until the next time. And when I speak next time, it's going to be when I'm introducing the next head coach. So, you know, there's the speculation, obviously, the pie in the sky. He's an Oklahoma guy, so, oh, it must be Bob Stoops. I don't think it's Bob Stoops. Um, Maybe Dan Mullen. It'll be interesting to see if that conversation manifests itself. But I would say maybe not. Um, you know, there was always stuff about his wife not liking Starkville. And, and look, I think Mullen may have done his time there. He could do Bobby Petrino 2.0. He could do Mac Brown 2.0. That's that's a possibility. I, I think you have to look at someone like a Jamie Chadwell at, at Liberty. I think you go maybe down to Troy and have an interview with that head coach. I, I think maybe you go over to, you know, if, if, if Texas A&M, um, talking with Ola Buchanan with Texas yesterday, if they don't pursue Jeff Trailer hard, I think you may want to take a good look at him and what he's done at UTSA. Um, you know, you might want to get an interview with Lance Leopold at Kansas if he'll talk. So I, I think there's some viable options. I think there's some coordinators out there as well at Georgia and some other places that you that you want to look. So what I think for Zach Selman, you got to have a couple things. One, you got to have a coach that is bought into NIL, right? Somebody – and that's everybody from this point forward. you got to be bought into the NIL, the transfer portal, able to work it um, and to maneuver through it. And then, two, Mississippi State needs somebody that is, you know, an offensive innovator. Um, that's what made Dan Mullen work, you know, to a large degree at Mississippi State. That's what made Mike Leach work at Mississippi State. You know, that's what was so baffling with the Kevin Barbe hire is that when they went, you know, he'll turn on the entire team and went, you know, ground and pound three yards in a cloud of dust. You can't do that. Not at Mississippi State. You just you just can't do it. I think you got to play outside the hash marks. I think you got to be a little more savvy. Um, I've joked a lot this week that Mississippi State needs to go find that Mike McDaniel kind of guy. You know that that Joe Brady. Maybe Joe Brady gets a look. I mean, in, in, in the NFL, you got to think outside the box. And, and I think that's where Zach Selman ultimately probably ends up is an offensive innovator that is uh, you know savvy in recruiting and that that understands the the new and improved NIL space that we're in. Mm -hmm. All right, final thing for you, Jake. Really appreciate your time. I, I know this is getting lost in the discussion because you, I, I know down there on the afternoon drive you're going to be bombarded with uh, the coach search and all that, but we, we got an Egg Bowl coming up here. And I, I know how much that game means to everybody. Let's say best-case scenario, you know, they they should beat Southern. Let's let's just give them that one. Maybe they, they get some energy and, and just, just new buzz in that room or in that locker room and they beat Southern – this weekend, uh, do you give them a, any shot at all? Let's say Will Rogers comes back and, and he's he's looking good. Any shot at all to pull off a, a huge upset in the Egg Bowl and uh, and what that would do for the fan base to just, just get that bad taste out of their mouth? Yeah, I mean, look, if they can beat Southern Miss, and they should, but again, you know, we don't know if this team's packed it in. Uh, Greg Knox, who is obviously uh, put in the interim coach position this week, He's kind of got that kind of like Williams position from last year with Auburn. So, you know, if they can get that win and they need that win, uh, you know, to get that extra, extra win to, to extend their season, you know, and Will Rogers is back. Yeah, I can see Mississippi State keeping it close for a little bit. But but I just feel like in the Egg Bowl and, you know, of course, uh, we were talking about the line today. I believe it's right around 14, 14 and a half is what I saw at a pin gaming uh, released yesterday or today for that game, you know, the early line. I just think Ole Miss is too talented. I think they're, they're it's a bad matchup for Mississippi State's defense. You know, they have given up so many yards in the passing game, and I just feel like this is a game where Ole Miss will be able to kind of name a number. Um, I could see State keeping it close. We've seen some weird egg bowls, but this just feels like a year where 
um, this this one could get ugly for Mississippi State. Yeah. Well, before you go, Jake, really appreciate your time again. Can you tell my audience where can they follow you? Where can they find your work? Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate it as always. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of yours. On X, formerly at Twitter, at Jake Wim. And of course, you can go to the zone1059.com, stream all of our shows all day long. I'm on three to six each and every day, Monday through Friday. And of course, uh, again, back on X as well. So, and all the other social media platforms. Uh, I'm like Michael, I like to cut up, chat, you know, interact with uh, all the fans out there anyway. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, uh, Jake. And, uh, be safe on the road, man. I, I really appreciate it. Will do, Michael. Appreciate it so much.